focus. However, I have worked with classes that are so unfocused, so out of kilter, that the only effective way to really calm them down in the, in the first one or two meetings is to actually go walk about around the room, work with one or two, a little group here, a little group there, calm them and settle them at that point as we move around the room, and then come back to the front of the room and more formally begin the lesson in that way. This is far better than simply shouting the class down or shouting the class up. <sighs> All right, in you come. Excuse me, excuse me. What's your first name, please? Why do you want my name? Excuse me, I'm not speaking to you in that tone. Yeah, why do you want to know my first name? I don't want to tell you my first name. I'm your new English teacher. What's your first name, please? Thank you. What's your first name, please? What's your name? My name's Mr. Rogers. What's your first name, please? Susie. Thank you, Susie. What's your first name, please? Jasmine. I've noticed that you've completely rearranged the furniture here. The class row actually starts back there. You yeah. want to see over here? My friends, yeah. Your friends, yeah. I have no problem. See your friends. I have no problem with that. However, the class furniture just get, just go over there in this class, huh? So I want you to put it back there. Thank you very much. Yeah, Mr. Wyatt, is it like this? Yeah. Oh, I can check that with Mr. Wyatt. In this class, how the furniture goes over there. Huh? No, I'm sorry, we're staying here. You're not going to move. You it's Wyatt, let's ask him. Exactly. If you, uh, if you choose not to move the furniture back there, I know it's a pest, but I'll have to have a little chat with you at lunchtime, all right? So please think about it, right? Don't care. Pardon? Still don't care. I care. And that's where, that's why that's why it's about the friends you go back. Thank you. Cheers. Oh, All right. Uh, how's it going? Up? Sorry, Francesca and uh, the new teacher. So it's Francesca and Natalie. Well, it's Romeo, isn't it? Is it Romeo? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Excuse me, what's, uh, what's your name, please? John. John, is it? John? John. Uh, John. Oh, John, I'm sorry, John. I'm ready to start the class. Yeah, just talking. Just yeah, I know. I'm, I'm ready to start the class. You need to be in the seat. Oh, thanks. Morning, guys. Morning. Morning. Uh, I haven't learnt all your names yet. I think it's Reese, isn't it, Reese? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You look pretty hungry with that bag in you. Yeah. Ready to start the lesson. You, uh, and it's Matt, isn't it? Yeah. But I can't remember your name. Joe. Joe. Please to meet you, Joe. Look, um, there's a spare seat over there. I'm ready to start the lesson. Thanks. I like this seat. Can I sit here, well, it wouldn't be a problem if there were only two seats to a table, but there's a spare seat there. Thanks, uh, yeah. Joe, isn't it? Thanks, Joe. Yes. Good on you. Oh, right. There are several defining moments in this scene. As the teacher moves around the room, speaking to the students and establishing by a walkabout, if you like, what we're seeking to do is to keep the level of intrusion low, least intrusive where possible, wherever possible, more intrusive only as is really necessary. We also want to avoid unnecessary confrontation, and that includes, of course, sarcasm, cheap shots, scoring, trying to win in a situation with a student. And also, probably the most difficult one of all, to keep the fundamental respect intact. What the students will always hear is our intention. Do we feel confident? Or do we believe that we're confident in ourselves as a leader? And is that respect and confidence coming through? And probably also equally uh, difficult is to keep the focus of any of these exchanges when we're seeking to bring some leadership and some correction, to keep the focus of the exchange on the primary issue the main essential or necessary issue at that point, and not get over-engaged in secondary issues like whining, moaning, sighing, pouting, eyes to the ceiling, tut-tutting, and also other teachers don't care where we sit. The three girls at the back who'd moved the furniture that were complaining. When those students were rude, it was imp it's important just to address that briefly and clearly. I'm not speaking like that to you then direct them to move the furniture back, but not to ask them why they've moved the furniture. Direct them clearly, least intrusively, address the rudeness, of course, address that, but not take massive umbrage, how dare you speak to me like that, who do you think you're speaking to, or pleading with them, why are you being rude to me? Why are you being... Never ask a student why they're rude to you. It's a complete waste of time. 
particularly in front of the audience. And remember, the 70% are always watching all of these exchanges. By default or by design, they're making up their mind about the leader at this point. Once that calmness has uh, been established by moving around the room, we've also learned quite a few names in the process, we can then come back to the front of the room and much more calmly and purposely uh, focus the class and begin that, uh, that establishment of the lesson. This is much better than, again, shouting the class down or shouting the class up. Here's a summary of the key points. 